Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Unrooted Women's Volleyball Edition. And my guest for this week's show is none other than sophomore setter on the women's volleyball team, Jade Rockwood. Jade, thanks so much for joining me on the show. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Let's start by getting to know you a little bit better. And first off, I have to ask you about something that was mentioned in last <laughs> week's show with Sierra Busher. She mentioned mm -hmm. that you have a superstition involving an old pair of running shoes. What's the story behind them? So the story behind them is that I bought a new pair of shoes for volleyball this season. Um, they're Under Armour, they match our logo and everything. And when I wore them for like preseason, I was fine, but then I wore them against UC Merced and I probably had the worst game of my life I've ever had. And I literally remember on the way back in the vans, I bought a new pair of shoes on my phone. Yeah. Now Sierra said that you were going to burn the shoes, but yet they're right here on the desk. Uh, so why are they right still here? here. Um, I still have them because I really like shoes and they look good with the uniform. And when I had a concussion, I was wearing them around. So I kind of have like a little shoe obsession. How many pairs of shoes would you say that you have right now? Um, in my dorm room, about 30, maybe total around like 45, 50. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, you could go a month and a half and not wear the same pair of shoes. I like they're like in rotations, so seasonal. Yeah, and like I like when I wear an outfit, I have to wear like a certain pair of shoes. It just works out that way. Okay, <laughs> you do you, you do you, Jade. Uh, now you also at one point in your life were a member of the Cats Volleyball Club in the Northwest. Is there a better name for a volleyball club than the Cats Volleyball Club? I honestly have no clue where the name. <laughs> Cats came from. Um, I played with them my senior season because my like one of my favorite coaches coached for them, and she helped me get recruited and everything. But I actually used to play for a volleyball club that was named VIP Juniors, and it stood for Values Impact Players. Um, but we always said it was very important players. So of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I would have done. Too. But I literally have no clue why it's named Cats to this day. You don't need to question it though. That's no, just cool. That's put it's on the uniform. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you led the Oaks in assists as a freshman, and you're coming on strong here down the stretch. Actually, recently you were named the GSAC Setter of the Week just one week ago. What has led you to getting better and more comfortable as the season rolls on? Um, I've had a lot of support from my teammates this year, especially at the very beginning, especially after that really horrible game I had. Um, <laughs> the support this season is just phenomenal with all of us, and I think it also plays a key role a uh, role in our success for all of us. So that's they kind of help me get in the groove, and our communication with our hitters is phenomenal this year. So I think it's just an all-around better connection. All right, let's talk a little bit about the team now and the connection that you guys are having. That last game against William Jessup on Saturday, that was a thriller. It went five sets. You guys took the first two sets against William Jessup. What was going right for you guys during those first two? I think we didn't let them come out in such a lead in the first two sets, and we really um, fought back and tried to find our rhythm. Our serving was also really good the first two sets. I feel like we were getting them out of system a little bit more, so it was a little easier to read what they were going to do next. Um, but it was just overall, I think Jessup had an amazing game. So. Yeah, they were able to scratch and claw their way back to force the fifth set. And like you said, some really hot starts for them. What was it that changed in between the second and the third set that enabled them to get back into it and eventually force a fifth set? I think, honestly, they were digging anything we hit at them. It just seems like a ball couldn't go down. They just were going after everything. And no matter what we tried to do to adjust, it was just they wanted it so bad and in that fifth set it doesn't matter who's the better team it's just mm -hmm. who shows up that day and who's putting it all out there on the court now what kind of mental and physical toll can it take on a player to go five sets the first set went bonus volleyball you guys went past 25 and then the yeah. final set first 15 wound up being 22 to 20. What's that like for a player? Um, it's crazy. I mean, it's one of the more mentally tough parts of the game because volleyball is a game of mistakes and you can't, you have to play air free once you hit 15 mm -hmm. and they, we fought them off on so many set points and we just kept battling. It was just that one ball and couldn't help, but yeah, just yep. an awful way to end the game. 
But it was exciting to watch, I'll say that, even though I wasn't there watching the live feed for William Jessup. I mean, they're up a point, you guys tie it, you're up a point, they tie it just back and forth, back and forth. It was exciting, but these it was a fun. It was a fun game. That The end yeah. of that was fun. It was just sad to see it end like that. Yeah, no, for sure. So now you guys go on the road along Southern California into Arizona trip. You're leaving on Wednesday. What's it like being on the road for up to four days at a time? Um, it can just be tough. Like you kind of just miss laying in your own bed. Um, we kind of have a thing where we listen to a lot of music on the road, which helps us. And because just kind of not getting our home meals that we usually get and sleeping in a hotel bedroom. And it can be exhausting, but um, we kind of like make it at home for each other. Just, I think road trips are fun for us, especially van rides. We kind of just crank up the music and get a little crazy in the car. So. Well, now this time you get your own, uh, you get a plane, so you're gonna have the headphones in probably. Yeah. Everyone minding their own business. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. You don't want to talk to me. Yeah. How's that gonna work out? Um, I think a lot of naps on the planes. You guys naps. are one hour nappers? You can do it? I, I can one hour nap. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can take more than a one hour nap too if you were put up to it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Now you guys wrap up the trip in San Diego Christian and Arizona Christian. You, Those are two pretty big games for you guys in terms of potential playoff seedings and you beat them at home here a couple of weeks ago. What's the mindset for the team going into those two games in GSAC play? I think um, a big thing for us right now is finding our game and finding it early. And um, for us, that's going to be huge as we continue the season. And also just staying like we're one of the best serving teams in the conference. So um, to keep going forward with that and just staying disciplined in what we do and just keep things simple. All right, Jade, let's get into the final segment of the show. It's called Brownie Bites. I'm going to ask you three random off the wall <laughs> questions. You got to give me your best answer. All right. All right. Question number one. Who has the oldest pair of shoes on the team and needs to burn them? Jaden Scott definitely has the oldest. I don't even think they're volleyball shoes, but they're definitely the oldest pair. I would say Brooke Burgos, but she's red trading and she would have gotten a new pair. But Jaden just uh, really needs to get rid of hers. What has she got? She's got like these Nikes and they're black and just... They're so worn down, and I just, I would give her my old pair of shoes, but we're not the same size. <laughs> <laughs> I say she's a little bit bigger than you, so I don't think that Yeah, would. and I, I think I have the smallest feet on the team. What size? And I'm a six and a half in women's. And you're five nine? Yeah, it's kind of like a, a I get made fun of it for a lot, actually. <laughs> well, I'll try to restrain myself from that. <laughs> Question number two. If you were to name a volleyball club, mm -hmm. what would you name it? All right, so we decided that we would name it um, we well because the running joke on the team is also that i have an obsession with mcdonald's yes okay and it's it's pretty bad <laughs> and i think i got mcdonald's this weekend too and uh, we would name it mcd in hopes that i would just get sponsored by them so i just get a little free mcdonald's so kenzie was telling me before we went on the air that you at one point had a $50 McDonald's gift card and rumor has it that it was gone in a week. Yeah. Can so you confirm or deny? I can confirm. <laughs> so I got a McDonald's gift card for my birthday um, and it was gone. I think I went every day. How, do you, how does one go every day to McDonald's? What do you get? What do you get? What's the draw? So I have two usuals. Um, <laughs> you either get a large number one, which is a Big Mac, okay. or I get a McDouble and a McChicken. You know, like on the two for two fifty menu. Yeah, those and two? you just put the McChicken and the McDouble, and it's really good. You put them together. Yeah, you put them together. <laughs> She's innovative, folks. She's starting to get. You know what? I might have to go to McDonald's now and try this. It's out. really good. I promise you. I advise everyone to try it. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to move on to the third question. Number three <laughs> is, which teammate would be most likely to have mm. a pet rock? So Monica originally popped in my head because she's a little more on the nature side and she's just, I love her to death and she would. But I also decided that Zach Hawkins, our assistant coach. Oh, really? Would own a pet rock just because he's a little lonely. He lives on <laughs> campus. I never see him out and about. Don't know. I swear he probably has a couple of pet rocks. Just <laughs> So the pet rocks interact with each other Probably. to keep him entertained. Probably. Okay. Have you ever considered having a pet rock? No, never. 
Good. I don't. I don't. I'm just gonna say good. Yeah. I will just. <laughs> I hope I have friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw. Okay. So I'm gonna throw my brother under the bus here. One year for Christmas, my parents thought it would be a good idea to get him a pet rock. Oh. They legitimately sell these things. Now, I don't know Did what... Did they put googly eyes on them? No, it is literally just a rock. Just and a rock? it comes in a cardboard box with like... I, I don't even know what you would want to call it, but like ground up paper to act as like a nest oh. on the inside. You know you know, like what, what they have on the inside of Easter baskets? Yeah. Like that stuff to make up a, a nest kind of thing inside the box and then the rock is sitting on top. Oh gosh. And Just you had one of the first things you have to do with a pet rock is name the pet rock. Well, my brother didn't name the rock and it well, just What would you better. name the rock? Well, it depends on if we're talking if it's a boy rock or a girl rock. Mm -hmm. That's True. an important That's a good question. Point. That's a, good point. Um, a boy rock, I don't know, Rico, Rico the Rocco. Like that's kind of I think cool. I would just name it Rocky. <laughs> Well, yeah, <laughs> then, you're, then you're pulling the whole Spongebob bit. Oh, man. You know. Not original, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You can't just take the name from Spongebob. You have a point. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jade, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thank you for having me. And fans, the Oaks volleyball team is on the road this week, and they are on the road for quite some time here this week. Three road contests coming up. First, they're going to St. Catharines, a, a matchup on Wednesday night in San Marcos at 7 o'clock. And then they have a couple of road contests afterwards where they will be taking on San Diego Christian and Arizona Christian Thursday night and Saturday night before the Oaks eventually will make their way home for the following weekend, which is Oktoberfest. Don't forget, the 27th and 28th of October. Get out here for Oktoberfest at Menlo College. The Oaks Volleyball team will be in action on Friday and Saturday. We invite you to tune into next week's show when Jade Rockwood will select the next interviewee <laughs> on Unrooted Women's Volleyball Edition. Until then, we'll see you next week. Take care, everybody.